Well, good afternoon. It is 4.20 and you join us here under the backdrop of the clock tower at the University of Birmingham for the Ibsa Women's Blind Football third place playoff match. And here come the two teams now, India and Sweden. Disappointed to have narrowly missed out on a place in the final. Nonetheless, we'll be happy with the way their campaign has gone so far and they still have a medal to hopefully bag today too. And here they come now, India and Sweden, ready for the national anthems. What is brilliant to see is in the main stand some of the nations they have faced so far in the competition here to uh, support them in this final game of their campaign. No place in the Paralympics, of course, for women's blind football, but this is a benefit to them both in terms of the ranking points. Let's pass across now for the national anthems of both India and Sweden. sets of players very proud to be representing their countries in this third fourth place playoff let's take a look then at the two teams the home team first of all which is India for this one in goal number one it's Kanchan Patel number four Deepali Campbell number eight the uh, big talent in this India side Akshara Rana Number nine, somebody that impressed me, particularly on Friday uh, when they played Germany, Sangeeta Mecha. And number 10, Nima Ben. Uh, the subs, Aparna, Asha Chowdhury, Kamal Gaikwad, Shafali Rawat, and the head coach, Sunil Matthew, and the, gu the guide, Sina CV. As for Sweden. Well, number one, Moa Berg, which is uh, the Swedish captain. Number six, Sofia Bostrom. Number four, Lisa Lai. Number nine, Victoria Carlson. Number five, Alice Bernston. On the bench today for Sweden, two substitutes uh, to choose from, Helena Thielen and Anna Nielsen, and then the head coach, Mark Blake, and the guide, Ellen Ridd. As I said, a really strong contingent of uh, both athletes and fans in the crowd, which is fabulous to see. And a bit of a pressure off game in some respects. There is, of course, a medal on the line. 
but uh, this game I'm sure no doubt will be played in a really good spirit and Dixie we were chatting on Friday and uh, we saw the way the Indian and German teams came together at the, the full time whistle in that particular fixture there's a real sort of unity and, and a lovely spirit in which this women's game has been played yes it's definitely a, a friendlier competition than what the men's is to be honest uh, yeah at the end of virtually every women's game they, they've all got together in the middle and uh, there's hugs and kisses going on and photographs being taken and the team's all mingled up together which is really nice and uh, yeah, they're playing the game, uh, they play hard and they play fair and at the end of the game it's, uh, it, they're all friends again so it, that's particularly nice to see. The flag bearers make their way off and uh, final team huddle taking place but let's look at the fixtures then for the remainder uh, of the day. we've got this one of course and then it's the grand final later on at a slightly later time of 7 p.m so make sure you join us for that we'll be going live from 6 50 uh, local time here in the uk and that is between japan and argentina both of which particularly argentina uh, have been unstoppable throughout this competition argentina did get held though to a, to a goalless draw by austria which is perhaps a bit of a surprise um, on Friday but that will be a really interesting game and, and Dixie you're, you're a big admirer of that Argentinian side you think they've been really impressive oh I do and it, the, the two girls up front for Argentina are just absolute different class to anything that's in this uh, latest section of, of, of the tournament uh, yeah they're, they're, they're just so good and they pass it around really well together and uh, they're not very tall and uh, you know very slightly built but uh, they can certainly get themselves around the pitch well and uh, they know what to do when the, the ball's in front of the goal as well. They, uh, they finish particularly well. So, yeah, that's going to be a tough old game for um, uh, the Japanese side. Ja yeah. yeah, sorry, Japanese. I've seen a lot of games this week. <laughs> <laughs> you have. You could be excused for that one, my word. You've, uh, you've been here throughout. You're the, you've been the stalwart of our uh, commentary section, no doubt. Uh, Dixie just looking at this Indian side they've come together for a bit of a huddle the Swedish uh, side have, have done the same as well uh, and as I said real sort of team spirit uh, they picked up that one goal India in their first game uh, against Austria haven't found the back of the net since it was Akshara Rana that, that grabbed that goal and all of these players have such fascinating stories her Auntie uh, Shara Rana, Nita Rana, is a, is a power athlete herself. And she's taken a lot of inspiration from her. Um, and she started playing blind football with her PE teacher. And she's uh, represented her state, Atara Khand, in the North Central Zonal and National Tournament of 2023, held in Jharkhand. She's now being trained in Kochi Kerala to further improve her game so she's one of the stars of this Indian side and they've all got their own story to tell of uh, real perseverance to get to where they are now and it's brilliant that they're here in the UK in Birmingham representing their country and helping uh, push the game forward as well and get it up to a level alongside the men's blind football as well Sweden are poised it will be India to get things underway they are kicking from right to left as we see it where the camera is up on the top of the scaffolding we have here alongside the pitch facing the main stand with blue seats and patches of people in there including the red of the German side who are out of the competition. There's a big Indian flag being draped over the hoardings at the front. A reminder of the support that these players have. The referee just checking that the ball is on the centre spot. And then in the customary way, uh, the number nine Metro will get us moving. But the Swedish have formed a bit of a wall of defence straight off the mark. So will they be able to penetrate that India and get an early goal on the board? We're just waiting for the clock to tick to half past. And the 15 minutes gets underway then for the first half of this third, fourth place playoff between Sweden and India. And immediately, Sweden are on the attack through Lisa Lai. She takes the ball out to the kickboard on that left-hand side, just inside 
the attacking third for Sweden, but uh, maybe just misjudges where the ball was, and India regain possession in the middle third and move up over the halfway line. But for the number five for Sweden, Bernston. Bernston loses the ball, and here comes Metcher, who's a real bright, energetic spark in this India side. She's wrestling with a player much taller in stature than her in number nine, Carlson. And the two of them really are just locked arms at the moment, trying to really gain a foothold on the ball. It's turning into more of a judo game as opposed to football here. But uh, eventually, Akshara Rana regains control right on the line for the Indian attacking third. And then she has her pockets picked by Lisa Lai, who just crashes into the kickboard on that far left-hand side. And now the ball is just tucked inside the defensive third for Sweden. Neither side yet to really have any sustained possession. But now Sweden come forward over the halfway line through Bernson. Bernson is pegged back slightly into her own half, but she puts some nice footwork together and then releases the pass up to Lisa Lai. Tries to gain control of the ball and move towards the Indian D, but she's uh, faced up by the number four for India, Dipali Campbell. And eventually the ball is played back to the goalkeeper who releases it quickly, looking for number eight, Akshara Rana, who's further up inside the Swedish half. And now Sweden look to try and regain possession through their number nine, Victoria Carlson. She relinquishes possession to Mecha, who comes up over into the middle third. Lisa Lai takes the ball from her and then moves towards the near kickboard on this near side and sort of muscles her way through, still going Lisa Lai, but eventually loses out to Nirma Ben. Nirma Ben can't do too much with possession, but it's just floated through to Depali Campbell, who kicks the ball further upfield, straight back into Swedish hands. And again, a bit of a wrestling match going on in the middle third, and Dixie, neither side yet to really settle. No, not at all. It's very scrappy at the moment. They're just feeling each other out. It's a definite foul by the Swede there on uh, the Indian number eight. She's dragged her to the floor. I worry a little bit about Sweden because they have been playing well, but yeah, they got beat 3 0 in their last game against um, uh, uh, Argentina. So, you know, that's obviously set them back a little bit and they hit, hit their confidence, I would have thought. But uh, Indian, uh, the Indian team, although they lost that last game, um, they took Japan to a 0 0 and only lost on penalties. So, I think Japan, um, the Indian side can defend really, really well. So, yeah, at the moment, it's not really got going, but uh, you're just hoping. It's definitely a bit of nervousness in this Swedish side as number eight for India, Akshara Rana, tries to barge her way through the Swedish defence. And now there's a cluster of players together just trying to identify where the ball is. Could be a chance for Metcha here, but it's scooped up in the end by Moa Berg, the captain. Appears to be a bit of an issue with the scoreboard at the moment, which I think the referee has just noticed. Uh, the score is not 1-0 uh, as per the screen. It's still goalless as it stands. That has changed now. 12 minutes and 5 seconds of this first half left on the clock. They put the foul in the goal column. <laughs> That's what had happened there. It's an easy mistake to make. <laughs> Rolled out by Moa Berg up towards Lisa Lai. Lisa Lai looks like an, a decent player up top for Sweden as she tries to find a way through and a very physical player as well. But she's met her match in Nirma Ben. And the two of them just face to face really with the ball locked between their two left foot boots. The Indian side in their very uniform blue with orange boots. And there's an opportunity for Lisa Ben but she moves into the box and pushes uh, the goalkeeper there into the post. The goalkeeper, fair play to her there, Kanshan Patel, just checking that uh, Lisa Lai is OK, even though she took the brunt of that collision herself. Yeah, the, goal, uh, the referee's just readjusting the goals there, and uh, she's just going to let them start with a goal clearance. And again, the game being played in very good spirit. Forward. There's Akshara Rana, and she's up against the number uh, 
nine, I should say, Victoria Carlson. Two of them grappling with each other on the near side, just inside the Swedish half. Poked through and then prodded away by Nirma Ben. Right up against the kickboard, and the ball is just stationary at the moment. It's in front of the main stand, as I was saying. India today in their light blue with darker socks and their uniform orange boots. It's a mix of coloured boots in the Swedish ranks between orange and black, but they're all in yellow. And now an opportunity for India, a big opportunity. Mecha swings at it but completely misses her kick. Second bite of the cherry here, and it's just poked behind. I think that was a corner. Yes, it took a touch from the goalkeeper. Yeah, it's, def it's definitely a corner. Uh, you're spot on, Toby, there. Yeah, she had a good run into the box and she was totally unchallenged. And she had a lot more time than what she, she thought and she could have settled herself. And she's had a big swing at it and, uh, and missed it, then regrouped herself and managed to get a shot off. And it's uh, just touched the goalkeeper on the way out. And don't know why the referee was coming over there. But we got a corner to India. Doesn't trust the scorers, haven't changed the scoreboard again, perhaps, and was just checking in once more. Corner, though, for India on the near side, then in front of uh, the match announcers and the coaches and the scorers and everybody that's involved in the production and the uh, organisation of the blind games. On the far side, in front of the scoreboard, nearer the main road. On these uh, 4G pitches at the University of Birmingham Sport Campus. The corner is taken. Carlson comes hurtling across to try and intercept the ball, but it's still with India. Good skill from Metcher, but Lisa Lai in the way once again. She's been a ever present so far in this game and she moves up over into the middle third and just gets shoved to the side against the kickboard in front of the main stand. She's got three India players swarming around her trying to dispossess her up against the kickboard and Akshara Rana eventually brings the ball away but she's tackled strongly by uh, Bernson. Bernson tries to move forward at pace but the ball is sent back into Swedish territory and just trickles all the way through back to Moa Berg in the Swedish goal and we're into the final 10 minutes of the first half with just over five minutes gone. 15 minute halves uh, plus any stoppages in the women's game as the ball flows through for an India goal clearance. Yeah, it's a bit of a wasted throw by the Swedish keeper there, really uh, just sending it right down to her opposite number. Uh, need to get it to a yellow shirt if she can. Sangeeta Metcher, the Indian captain today. Impressed so far in this competition, just as Lisa Lai tries a, a shot on goal, which was deflected, just took the sting out of the shot, and it meant it was easier for the goalkeeper to collect. Uh, referee just checking whether the Indians' patches are still on correctly. And Sangeeta Mecha and Lisa Lai have their um, eye patches and their eye coverings checked in unison. And then Sangeeta Mecha hurtles out to that far right hand side to get herself into position for this goal clearance. She's unmarked. She faces her own goal as the, the ball rolls towards her and then completely evades both her and uh, Bernson. Bernson is in possession and she'll look to use her strength to move away from Sangeeta Mecha. Now Akshara Rana picks up the ball in the middle of the goal, moves into the attacking third, still going Mecha, can she poke it beyond Moa? She can't quite, she was just put off at the final second I think from Sophia Bostrom. Yeah, de definitely India are looking the more likely out of the two sides at the moment just need a bit of composure when they get in the box they, they tend to just swing at the ball and they just need to slow themselves down and steady up but they're looking the more likely team Isaac Sharana she's facing her own goal trying to fend off Victoria Carlson 
who tentatively moves over the halfway line into India's half and then she's immediately surrounded by two Indian players who take the ball away from here and then no nonsense stuff from Nirma Ben. she just thumps the ball upfield and that will roll all the way out for a Swedish goal clearance. Right, as my old PE teacher used to tell me, if in doubt, kick it out. <laughs> She's done just that and a timeout called and both sets of players head over to get some water on board and uh, receive some instructions from the coaches, the coach for uh, the head coach for India, Sunil Matthew, the guys Cena CV and their technical assistant, somebody you know well, Karen Seal. Yes, I've known Karen for, or well, probably getting on for 20 years. I, I think I was playing when he made his debut for England in, uh, I think we were playing in Portugal somewhere and uh, he made his debut as I, I was coming to the end of my career and uh, yeah, he's, uh, he played over 100 games for England. I think I can't exactly remember the the, uh, the number, but he'd been a proud Welshman and uh, he's got a Welsh tattoo on his on his leg, which we had to cover up, obviously. You've been involved in this game for a number of years now. How have you? What's been the most notable change from your perspective during that time? I would say in the men's game, like the, the, the ladies' game has only really been going for two or three years. In the men's, the men's game, it's the pace of it. The physicality, the pace, the athleticism, and just the sheer fitness levels of the players now. It's so different from the early, early noughties. And, uh, you, know, you know, there's a few ex-England players here today I was chatting to Darren Harris, he's another one, I think he had 150 caps for England. And David Clark is sitting up in the stand. He's uh, still the record goal scorer in blind football across the world, I think. And uh, yeah, they're still taking a keen interest in it, but uh, they probably wouldn't fancy it as much now as what it was like when they were playing. Now, I know one thing's for sure, I wouldn't fancy it as much now as... Uh, as well they did when uh, in the early noughties, that's for sure. It's always that debate, isn't it, from players of uh, eras gone by and how they would compete with players of today. Of course, across sports, so much more resource and money in various games. It's yeah. impossible to make comparisons right. it is because like in the, those players from the early noughties if they were given all the advantages that the players are getting now and all the support that the players are getting now, there's no doubt that they would have uh, they would have performed uh, equally as well you know, now as what they did back then but uh, as I say if you, the game has moved on in, in the men's so it's, it's tremendously uh, different and uh, as I say much more uh, rigorous and uh, quick and uh, yeah it's a, it's a faster game now long stoppage here for those of you that are, are just wondering what is going on the referee just paying extra attention to one of the Swedish players uh, eye masks but we're uh, in a position now to get things back underway it was Alice Berntsson that is uh, receiving a bit of extra attention some yellow shirts in the crowd supporting uh, Sweden, the German contingent here as well. Austrian side up there too. Maybe just uh, sizing up the opposition for future tournaments as well. Just as Ikshar Rana comes up face to face with uh, Bernson. Bernson, no messing from her. Very aggressive in the tackle there and just a bit of a tangling of legs in equal measure and an opportunity here for India just as they have a swipe at goal but again the goalkeeper equal to it Moa Berg it was at Shara Rana that was uh, sizing up the opportunity and that was uh, probably the best so far in this game. Yeah yeah it was a great opportunity it opened for, up for a bit again it was just just a little bit of lack of composure in front of goal and uh, just got over excited and not really connected with the first shot at all and uh, was fortunate enough to get back on the ball and uh, she did get a shot away in the end uh, towards the goal. Sophia Bostrom is the uh, player furthest back, tucked inside her own half, right up against the uh, 
goal line, just trying to find a way out. But lovely piece of skill again from Ikshara Rana to regain possession. And now she has it at her feet. She tries to move into the D, but it's at a very tight angle. The referee has a better corner. view than us, but it will be a corner for uh, uh, India. Yeah, we've got six and a half minutes to go here. And uh, India have won a corner, and they're definitely on top at the moment, uh, pinning this uh, Swedish side back into their own third and uh, yeah you can only see a goal coming from one source at the moment but um, let's uh, let's hope we can get this one done in the allotted time rather than going to the dreaded penalties that England went through at lunchtime corner ball then for India which is taken and off we go and it's poked straight into the box so across the box it went towards Dipali Campbell but it took her by surprise as it rattled past and here is Akshara Rana now again moving into the D she's definitely the standout player she advances into the box but it goes out and it will be a goal kick for Moa Berg the captain yeah one of the Swedes has uh, unfortunately run into the back post uh, just checking her face to make sure there's no injuries on there. This is where your goalkeeper is vitally important. Your goalkeeper's got to be talking. And, uh, you know, the outfield players don't know where the goals are. So if your goalkeeper doesn't take care of your safety, you are going to run into the post. So you need your goalkeeper to be alert and be giving the information out uh, that it's necessary. That's going to roll right through and it's just a waste of a throw again. Yeah, she needs to be talking to her defenders to say, right, you know, there's a post there, the Indians are there. And she's obviously not said a word then and the Swedish girls just run head full long into the post. India in possession through Akshara Rana. She's uh, tracked by Victoria Carlson. Victoria Carlson, certainly the tallest player on the pitch for Sweden. And there she is. Good tackle from her. Stops the Indian side in their tracks. And there's a bit of a huddle that has almost formed inside the Swedish half. Neither side really able to gain control of the ball. Here's Akshara Rana again. And eventually the ball spills out to Alice Bernston. But India win it back through the lady that is uh, creating the best of the opportunities. But now finds herself on her backside just outside the Swedish D there. And Sweden will come away with it through Victoria Carlsen. Very tentatively so. She moves into the Swedish half. And that's a good pass to Lisa Lai, but it will trickle all the way out for a goal kick with her unable to bring the ball under control. Into the final five. Yeah, it was uh, uh, sheer force there when Sweden won the ball back. Uh, the physicality of the Swedes against the smallest statured Indians uh, won out on that occasion. But up until now, the, the Indians, even though they're a lot, lot uh, smaller, they're battling really well with them, and uh, you wouldn't know that uh, that's a foul. That low centre of gravity, that was a pretty blatant one there. <laughs> it was almost a, a situation where Bernson thought, well, I'm not getting anywhere near the ball, I'll just take the player down. Yes, he's wrapped both arms around her waist and virtually picked her up. Mm. So we've got a, uh, the Indians have got a free kick, uh, I would say it's um, eight, nine metres out. Uh, not central um, it's just uh, in line with the right hand posters you guys at home look at it they're really, they've been very impressive India they're very busy as a side you know they're, they're, their enthusiasm and energy levels don't really seem to drop throughout the whole game and certainly the two over the ball now Mecha uh, and uh, Akshara Rana are the two real stars of the side it feels yeah, they work really hard, as I say, on um, Saturday, was it? Um, they took um, Japan, who were a good side, and they took them to... It took Japan five penalty kicks to beat them, you know? So they kept Japan out during the game total in there, and it, it, the only way Japan went through was on, on penalty kicks. So they're, they're, a, they're a tidy little side, and they, they know how to defend... Here's Lisa Lai, chance for her to run at goal and she just sends Campbell to the floor, barges through her like a freight train. Here comes Nirma Ben and she moves up into the centre circle. 
now just sort of almost passes the baton on to Metcher who continues this run but she's stopped in her tracks by Burnson but regains possession does Metcher she's got Sharana in support of her who just a moment ago had a really good effort on goal but just went wide of Moa Berg's post India still in possession through Metcher but she loses out to Victoria Carlson on that far side the guy behind the India goal just trying to will the Swedish side forward and that will go out for a uh, goal kick and it's an interesting uh, just as the uh, buzzer goes here for a substitution Dixie it's, a, it's an interesting role the goalkeeper sort of plays I mean how do they come to be in this position where they are playing for the for the blind women's football side and, and how important is their job They've got a vital role, an absolutely vital role. They're controlling the defensive third. And I always used to say, you know, when I played, if you're a good communicator, you can get the players to do your work for you. Right? So, instead of you getting smashed in the face, if you can communicate well enough to get your defenders in the right position to snuff out the attacks, it lightens the load on what you do. And if you look at... Uh, the men's side of it. If you look at like Dylan Malpass, he is an. Just as India come forward again, it's a corner. He's an excellent communicator, and and he's a brilliant goalkeeper as well. So he's got both things going for him. He communicates really well. It's short, sharp instructions and keeping your players around you informed of what's going on. So it's a vital role. Um, so it's two prong really. You're doing two jobs. You're coaching, and you're the goalkeeper. India have a corner and in amongst all of that we have seen a change for Sweden. Alice Bernson has come off. Helena Thelin on in her place. Looks like we might see an Indian substitution in a moment or two's time as well. Three minutes and 13 seconds left on the clock as uh, Carlson there is sort of nutmegged and the ball trickles into her own D. Spills out to the near side up against the kickboard and India regain possession. poked through again Metria can't quite wrap her foot round it and it goes through to the goalkeeper who scoops up and launches the ball upfield looking for Thelin for her first involvement in this game but the ball is stopped unfortunately for her by Deepali Campbell who makes an excellent run forward she needs a bit of support around her but unfortunately it doesn't come and she has to just try and go it alone and then bulldoze her way through but before the ball enters the box and unfortunately for her ends up in Moa Berg's hands who releases it again looking for Thelin who uh, wraps her arms around an Indian defender back on hand though is Mecha and she uh, releases the ball upfield really well the captain today Sankita Mecha she regains possession but is just pushed and shoved there right on the halfway line by Lisa Lai but that doesn't deter her off she goes she shoots at goal and just drags it wide of uh, Moa Berg's post much to the disgust of the Indian guy behind the goal she threw her arms up in the air then but uh, they've won it back India and are on the attack again there's Nirma Ben she moves through the centre circle and just lays it off for Akshara Rana she can't hold on to the ball it's back with Nirma Ben who's just being uh, manhandled by Victoria Carlson they're very physical they like to grapple to the Swedish side play too much of the ball so far it's turned into a bit of a rugby game at times yeah I think the Swedes are finding it difficult in so, so much as because the the Indians are much smaller stature than them when when they're leaning onto them they're going over the top of them because the Swedes are about two foot taller all round and it makes it difficult when you're trying to tackle someone if, if you can't feel where they are and uh, and you're back on attack again and they've got another corner it's all India isn't it absolutely the standout player though definitely for Sweden is uh, the board just hits uh, one minute and seven seconds remaining certainly is Lisa Lai she looks the most accomplished when she has got the ball uh, at her feet of any of those Swedish players yeah and I'm liking the look of the Indian number four is it Campbell um, she looks a good player. I, I know when they played the Japanese the other day and they were under the cosh, she defended extremely well. And uh, she's quite decent on the ball and she's, uh, it's a bit, she's a good deal taller than the rest of the Indians. And, uh, yeah, she, she's uh, a good player and someone to build a, a team around her. 
Well, it's the corner then, right in front of uh, the main stand on this warm evening in uh, Birmingham. And for those of you that are maybe watching from India, what we class as uh, warm is around about the 20 degree mark. And for us, that's, uh, that's exceptional weather here in the Midlands, which we're enjoying. Bit of a suntan maybe for us. Yeah, it's been a typical British summer this year. It's been awful. <laughs> Here's Akshara Rana trying to find a goal on the brink of half time. She moves into the D. Here she is. She's still going, Akshara Rana. Doing really well, just trying to force her way through. She does eventually put it behind for a goal kick with 51 seconds remaining. Goal clearance, I should say. As Campbell finds herself on the ground. She just collided there with the substitute, Thelin. The ball has been sent up towards the substitute. She does really well to bring that under control. In the attacking third in India's half now, the guard is just doing her best to try and drive her towards the Indian goal to no avail. And now eventually India come away with it through Nirma Ben. Ben nutmegs Lisa Lai and is still going here, Nirma Ben. Eventually Lisa Lai just tracks back and makes up for the missed tackle. Nirma Ben still going here. Can she unleash the shot? too far out for Moa Berg to grab hold of the ball in 15 seconds remaining we have ourselves another corner yeah it's definitely India in the ascendancy in this game I think the vast majority of it has been played in and around the Swedish box hasn't it um, uh, Shara Rama Rana sorry and uh, Nirma Ben just came together there as uh, Nirma Ben was she was really working hard to get back into a defensive position and the two just came together and she's just had her eye mask adjusted. Now we're ready for this corner. 15 seconds to go. Lisa Lai in possession now. Corner came to nothing, but India trying to keep the ball in the Swedish half. Here's Metcher. But uh, the Swedes uh, staying strong here as the clock trickles down. And uh, you'll have heard... The uh, buzzer go off then for the end of this first half and uh, Dixie it wasn't the most memorable. Those sides uh, a bit cagey but there have been a couple of good opportunities and definitely India the side that are looking the more likely. Yeah, India have had all the good chances as far as I can uh, remember. Uh, as I said they, in the comments, they just need to calm down a little bit in front of goal. They uh, they get into some really good positions and uh, that, that final touch on the ball is the one that's letting them down. So I'm sure the coach... Um, we'll be having a, a word with them about trying to get into good positions and staying calm and uh, yeah he's, he seems quite happy at the moment doesn't he we're looking at him he's the Indian coach he's smiling and uh, yeah and you've got every right to because uh, yeah they must have come when they come over here 10 days ago whatever if you just said you'll be playing for the third place game he would have been taken out straight away so uh yeah, good luck to them. Definitely India on the ascendancy. Absolutely. Well, that is half time here. Uh, we've got about well, just under nine minutes of it remaining. We'll have the uh, second half for you shortly. The uh, scoreline goalless as it stands. So let's watch a, a short video then about the rules of uh, blind football. It's fast, technical, and tense. This is your guide to five aside football. There are five players per team four outfield players and a goalkeeper. The aim of the sport is to score a goal by kicking the ball into your opponent's goal and at the end of the game, whoever scored the most wins. Players must wear eye shades to ensure that all players have the same level of vision. That is apart from the goalkeepers who aren't required to wear eye shades and can be fully sighted. Their job is to keep the ball from going in the goal behind them. But how do the players on the field know where the ball or indeed the goal is? Well, the ball in blind football is specially designed to make sound whenever it moves. Also, each team has a guide behind the opposition goal to help direct them. Each player is required to shout VOI when going for the ball. This ensures every player has the cues they need to help build a picture of what's going on and what to do next in defence or attack. To help this, total silence is required from the crowd until a goal goes in. Boy is Spanish for go, and it was the Spanish who were credited with originally developing blind football in the 1920s. As well as the Paralympics, teams from all corners of the world can compete at World, European, Asian, African and America's championships, as well as a World Grand Prix. 
Blind football can be played by both men and women with the historic first Women's World Championships coming up in 2023. So what are you waiting for? Give it a try. IBSA International Blind Sports Federation presents with the support of the International Paralympic Committee IBSA Anti-Doping App the first application of its kind in the Paralympic movement specifically designed for blind and visually impaired people Athletes, coaches, medical staff, managers and the public in general now have a powerful tool to stay focused on the principles of clean sport Scrolling down the main menu, you can find all the important themes you need to know to play fair and be alert to testing procedures and necessary adaptations for athletes with visual impairments. IBSA gives top priority to anti-doping control, being the only international federation with three sports in the Paralympic family, goalball, football and judo. IBSA anti-doping app has external links, namely to WADA, where our sport agents can always find the most updated information, especially the list of prohibited substances and methods. Glory in sport can only be achieved by the athlete's awareness of their rights and responsibilities. You can find them on the IBSA anti-doping app. IBSA is continuously promoting anti-doping education to all its affiliate athletes and sport agents, not only about the consequences of the use of doping, and the risk of using supplements. IBSA believes that education is the major tool to fight doping in sport. Informed athletes can make better decisions. Download the app now at the usual operating system stores. And ladies and gentlemen, we have seen history being made today. Such a great team at these championships. IBSA. Beyond sight. Feel the sport.
Welcome back to the second half then of the uh, third, fourth place uh, playoff, which remains goalless in the women's blind football here at the IFSA Games. Really strong crowd of uh, fans in now as well, and uh, a lot of Indian fans behind us that we didn't necessarily see as we were commentating on that first half that are up on the path watching their Indian side with their flags as well, which is fantastic, making lots of noise. And the Swedish players were just enjoying actually walking back out onto the pitch there for the second half, waving to the crowd as they came on. And uh, it's uh, being watched as well by a very uh, special uh, guest in the stands too, uh, Dixie. Yes, uh, David Clark's up in the stand. I just noticed him. Dave uh, used to play centre forward for England many years ago and uh, played 144 times for his country and scored 128 goals. That's not a bad strike rate, is it? Dave uh, is now he's chief e chief executive of the British Paralympic Board, and uh, he's your um, supporting uh, these two two teams playing. Yeah, he's enjoying the afternoon. Of course, we've got the final coming up between Argentina and Japan. All very excited about that one. And then a full roster of games with the quarterfinals in the men's game tomorrow. I know, Dixie, you're particularly excited to see some of those games with some really strong sides. I'm calling it Super Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> it's an absolute brilliant packed day tomorrow. Uh, right from half past eight in the morning, right the way through till... 6.30 in the evening, so yeah, some really good games tomorrow. 15 minutes to go here then, just as uh, the referee is having a word with some of the Indian players, just checking uh, the uh, masks of those players. There's been a lot of that in this game. The uh, Indian guide, is, I think the head coach is now behind the... Uh, the goal for India acting as guide it was interesting actually at half time the head coach for Sweden and the guide for the Swedish side really deep in conversation out on the pitch and he was talking through some calls that need to be made um, in that second half so I wonder what uh, the messages were there we're almost ready to go here referee gets the thumbs up from the goalkeepers and the guides And we are underway. At last. <laughs> so Thelin that's immediately in possession, the number seven, who was a first half substitute. She got pushed up against the kickboard there, but brings the ball back inside. And now Nurma Ben is the player that uh, meets her. And that will squeeze all the way through, I should think, for a goal kick. Well, Toby, I agree with you. I thought it was a goal kick. Referee has awarded a corner. <laughs> person who matters thinks it's a corner. The referee shakes the ball in the corner there just to indicate where the Swedish players need to go. And it's their number nine that wanders over. Victoria Carlson, supported by Helena Thelin. And they will take this one down there. Restarts taking a really long time. I don't know whether it's the referee that's sort of holding things up and kind of taking the pace out of the game. It yeah, I really don't understand why everything's just taking so long. Uh, we're ready now. Finally underway. Sweden take the corner, but it's immediately uh, intercepted by Indian players. They're pinned up against the kickboard on the near side, as I say, in front of the media and the coaches and the operational staff here. The two players are sort of resting up against the kickboard and the ball remains static just tucked inside the uh, goal line in that far corner India desperately trying to get further upfield and eventually they do through the player that impressed you in that first half Campbell still going here moves up over the halfway line but she's uh, pegged back by Carlson who gets her body goal side along with Lisa Lai right on the halfway line inside the center circle Carlson in possession and the ball spills out to that far side in front of the uh, main stand and that's where Nerma Ben is she brings the ball inside inside her own half comes over the uh, line that indicates the defensive third for India and the middle third and now we're up by the halfway line through Nerma Ben but she's stopped by Lisa Lai and now Campbell again in possession collides with her own player we move into the middle third through uh, Sagita Mecha 
She plays a, a tidy little pass through to Akshara Rana, who is met immediately by Lisa Lai up against the kickboard on that far side in front of the main stand. Will we see a goal in this second half? A couple of minutes gone since the start of it. Lisa Lai battling hard down there with Mecha and Akshara Rana. Mecha uses some neat trickery and footwork there and she tries to get then inside of Victoria Carlson. Not sure the referee is spotted. Something she's not happy with. She uh, marches over. Didn't necessarily see anything that was untoward there but the referee has been very whistle happy this afternoon. She's enjoying her role. Still in conversation with the uh, Indian player. We're just. I think I'm going to count to 10. <laughs> You know, a drop ball by the looks of things is uh, Mecha and uh, Carlson stand over it. Again, the referee just, I'm not quite sure what the hold up is. Kind of takes the momentum out of the game a bit and kills it. Absolutely, completely. Uh, you know, I'm a referee and I'll back referees all day long, but. My word. We are back underway, which is good. It was a drop ball that was given to Victoria Carlson. She kicked it back towards India. India then have the ball inside the centre circle, three of them on it. Carlson uh, trying to stop all three of them single handedly, and she does just that. But uh, the ball is back with India through Nurma Ben, and Nurma Ben brings it forward and does really well. Some close control from her fends off the advances of Carlson and gets pushed further wide keeps the ball in play does really well up against Lisa Lai who's of a similar height the two of them very evenly matched and trying to muscle each other off the ball Nema Ben brings it inside he's at the centre point in front of the goal but back now and the ball is inside the centre circle and Lisa Lai picks up possession and moves into Indian territory still going here Lisa Lai but Campbell has other ideas and wins back the ball and then gets a body in between Lisa Lai and the ball itself and looks to bring it forward and does just that. Shows good, uh, good tackling and then good close control as well and brings it forward. But again, Lisa Lai tracks back to try and regain possession. Campbell is uh, blocked off by Carlson and Carlson then brings it forward and Lisa Lai takes over in the centre circle over the halfway line and then a rash pass forward from Lisa Lai brings the game to a halt and we have a goal clearance we do nice bit of play by Campbell though and um, you know she carried it a long way and uh, things uh, started to open up to and then she lost out lost out on uh, a bit of a tussle with uh, one of the Swedish players but nice bit of play and Sweden have retrieved the ball and uh, they're heading off towards the halfway line some cracking footwork there from Lisa Lai to get the ball back up into the Indian half Campbell was about to keep the ball in play but then recognised it was going out for a goal clearance and let that flow so Kanch and Patel will take this win looks as though there's going to be another substitution for Sweden just as the ball is floated upfield up towards Akshara Rana not quite sure you're no better than me Dixie but that to me there where Carlson is in between both the player and the ball but not necessarily facing in the direction of the ball and is blocking the Indian player from running forward surely that is an infringement at that well, point they're very close to, <laughs> to uh, uh, giving free kicks away um, I think it's, it all depends on the interpretation the referee is putting onto the laws of the game uh, and I'm afraid her interpretation of the laws of the game and mine are a little bit different Oh, what a turn that is from Nurma Ben. Is she through here on goal? She's facing goal, but she can't quite poke home. She was facing the wrong way in the end, but it was a really wonderful effort from her. 
She races back into position straight away, but she's really grown in this game, Nirma Ben, and she almost troubles Moa Berg there. Forward comes Campbell. Another run similar to the one we saw a few moments ago inside the final 10 minutes of this encounter. Nikita Mecha now moves over the halfway line, but she's stopped in her tracks by Helena Thelin. The number five who went off in the first half, Alice Bernson, is uh, poised to be reintroduced to the match. Remains to be seen who she will replace. Lisa Lai tracks back to try and keep the ball in play. We will have a corner for India. And the substitution for Sweden. Helena Thelin, who came on in the first half for Bernson, is uh, the person to be omitted, and Bernson comes back on to replace her. Breathing deeply as though she's put in a real shift. So uh, the Indians have got yet another corner. Um, you know, if I was a coach, I think I'd be trying to get the girls to do something a little bit different from what they've been doing on the previous ones. But Campbell's on the ball. She's going to have a little run with it. Oh, that's, that's a bit unlucky. She's tried to drag it and go along the line, and uh, it just went a little bit wrong for her. But we've got a goal clearance to Sweden. Lisa Lai went flying out the traps there to stop the corner progressing. That ball's been rolled forward by uh, Moa Berg. Again. Bit of a waste. Kanchen Patel will uh, do the same. Hopefully she'll make more of it than the uh, Swedish goalkeeper. She loops it up and sends it straight down the middle and it finds Akshar Rana. Good control from her. And if she has the presence of mind here, she'll turn, which she does. Akshar Rana still running. Tries to move over the attacking third, but Lisa Lai is in the way. And Lisa Lai has been impressive in this game. She's tapping really robustly. And now Sankita Mecha will bring it forward and move into the attacking third for India. She's met, though, by uh, Victoria Carlson that gets her body very much in the way. Victoria Carlson, though, tries to tackle in vain. She needs support from Lisa Lai again. Sankita Mecha. Push further wide towards the kickboard in front of the main stand. The clearance is made by Sweden. And a bit of a coming together there by Alice Bernson. The ball went between her legs and it completely evaded her. And then uh, Nirma Ben brought it under control before the two players collided. The ball is now back out in Sweden, ha Sweden half in front of the kickboard in the main stand. Nirma Ben lashes at it and tries to send it goal bound. Now the ball is just sort of static in the D of the Swedish penalty area. But Lisa Lai does well. Nutmegs Akshara Rana and brings the ball away. Tries to get over the uh, defensive third. But back in it goes and Lisa Lai tracks back. The uh, weather is just sort of changed slightly. Looks as though we might have a bit of rain in a minute. But, uh, and that's going to go out for goal clearance. And I think India are going to make a substitution. Yeah, the match official signal for a substitution. And Sangeeta Mecha, which her day is done in terms of uh, the game. She, of course, might end up coming back on a bit later in the game. She's been told she needs to go down to the far end to be substituted off the pitch by the referee. So we're going to restart with a goal clearance. Now they've eventually done their substitution. Asha Chowdhury is the player that comes on in her place. 
The ball is rolled out by the goalkeeper up to Akshara Rana in front of the main stand, bang on the halfway line. She swivels and tries to move away from Victoria Carlson but leaves the ball behind her. Nirma Ben comes and joins the fold and moves past Carlson. Nirma Ben still going here up against Lisa Lai. The two lose balance ever so slightly. We're just level with the edge of the D out on that far side in front of the main stand up against the kickboard and Lisa Lai and Chowdhury and Nirma Ben battling for it. Nirma Ben shoots and it's it is corner. It's got a deflection off the Swede there, I think. A corner for India. Just less than seven minutes uh, remaining in this game, and Alice Burnson trots back to help with defensive duties, just as Momo Berg organises her wall. I think if I was the Indian coach now, what I would do is shove the number four up front. She's strong. She dribbles well. She's she she passes strongly, so she can pass it strongly into the net in my book. Uh, I think that's what I would be doing at, at this precise moment because Sweden are just not a threat to the Indian goal at all. But say no, here we go. They'll probably go up and score now. Commentator's curse as Victoria Carlson runs away with it, tentatively so. The Indians uh, support each other on defensive duty, but they are by far the better side in terms of ability. Lisa Lai, probably the most likely from a Swedish perspective to create anything in front of goal haven't scored yet in this competition Sweden I beg your pardon they've scored one in that opening uh, game against uh, Morocco in the draw and that was the goalkeeper scored it wasn't an outfield player she throwed through it from one end of the pitch to the other and the Moroccan goalkeeper instead of leaving it to go in when it wouldn't have been a goal because the goalkeeper can't score she bent down to pick it up and chucked it in her own net so that's how the swing goal comes. Here come India through Chowdhury, the substitute. She's halfway between the uh, halfway line and uh, the attacking third, but it's uh, prodded away from her by Lisa Lai. Downfield it goes inside uh, the Indian half. The whistle does blow. Referee unhappy with something she's seen. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a right good spot by the referee, that one. Uh, the Swedish player had her, her arm around uh, the Indian centre-back and it's going to be a, a free kick to India. Five minutes and 27 seconds left on the clock and then we will, uh, of course, have penalties decide who will take the third place uh, medal the Japanese have arrived ahead of the final or at least the coaching staff have looking very professional in their uh, facts of that in, in terms of kits I think I'd like one of those Japanese training tops I've decided yeah they, they look nice nicely turned out the Japanese aren't they and what a polite race they are around the village and all you know I bumped into one the other day and I remember I literally bumped into him and he was so apologetic and it was probably my fault because I was probably on my phone not looking where I was going. Exactly five minutes left on the board then. Still goalless between the two teams. Here comes uh, Campbell. You're right, Dixie. She seems the most likely here and she's still going. Campbell shrugs a couple of players off and dribbles past the final defender. Can she prod home just off balance ever so slightly? Yeah, that was a great run by Campbell. Uh, as I say, I, I think personally, you know, at this stage of the game, she is wasted at the back. You know, give her, put her up front. She's the strongest player in you have got, in my opinion, and uh, I think she's a little bit wasted uh, at the back there. We got a timeout now, and the girls are taking a well-earned drink. Uh, in terms of this Japanese Argentina final, then Dixie, which way do you sort of see it going? You, you said earlier on there are, for those maybe that haven't necessarily seen either side play yet, you said they're differing in terms of style. Can yeah. you explain that? Yeah, there's a, a, a golf in the, the the way that they both play the game. The Japanese will play it. They got one. They got a, a very good player in the number ten, and they tend to get the ball to her and. 
let her do her thing. Whereas the Argentine, they've got two young ladies up front who are both very wide eight on the boards and they pass the ball from board to board and they'll keep doing it and then they'll listen to the guy behind the goal and when the gap opens up, one of them will go into the gap. Um, it's very structured. Um, you know, I think I said in, in one of the other commentaries, it's a bit like Man City. Play, 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 play. Um, and uh, be patient, and they are patient, and they bide their time. And the two girls up front, I say, they, they, they um, once they go in on goal, they got a decent shot on them as well. So, and I think they probably, um, if they're not top goal scorer in the female set, they wouldn't be far off it. India had a, a, a massive result against England in the first game and scored five goals uh, in that one, but. Uh, since then they've been a bit shot shot really to be honest four minutes and 42 seconds then left on the clock we're into Fergie time here yeah. <laughs> and we've got uh, the referees uh, checking the patches I think the referee's sad that this is coming to an end the whole competition I think she's determined to prolong this game as long as possible <laughs> The Indian head coach is uh, out on the pitch, who's acting as guide in this uh, second half, just organising his uh, troops. He's been told to retreat. Oh. Alice Burnson still uh, receiving some assistance out on the far side from the referee and the coaching team. Still no play, just for those of you that are wondering why there's a halt in play, but we are underway. And it's uh, another long ball forward from the Swedish goalkeeper, Moerberg, the captain. It's met by Chowdhury. She's still battling away with two, two Swedish players on the, on the wall and the, the, the number four comes away with it for Sweden. She's by far their best player, uh, number four for Sweden. No, she's, uh, she's a good player and uh, she puts herself around a little bit. Absolutely. Here's uh, Chowdhury, the player she replaced with Sangeeta Mecha, who herself has competed in lots of other sports at school. She excelled in the uh, long jump. And, uh, she's uh, finishing various qualifications as well. She retained her BA from uh, Haldir Government College in Bengali and in 2018 she competed her Masters in Bengali from Rabindra Bharati University as well so lots going on in her life very talented individual the ball is uh, in front of the kickball on the far side in front of the uh, main stand Akshara Rana and uh, Chowdhury battling for it up with uh, Victoria Carlson I'm not quite sure why the referee's not blowing for a free kick there, but we play on. There's no attempt to play the ball from the Swedish player, and she completely keeps Chowdhury away from it. She gets a, she gets what she wants, though, and brings the ball away. And a nice bit of dribbling from her. Can she make her way up towards goal? She's uh, stopped by Nurma Ben. And they both now battle up against that kick board on the near side. And the back heel from Nurma Ben actually nutmegs Carlson as well as we... Uh, Toy with entering into the uh, defensive third for India. Nurma Ben blatantly pulled back there by one of the Swedish players. Nurma Ben though taking no prisoners and decides just to push the Swedish player off the ball. And now Carlsen uh, is sent back into her defensive third. But a hesitancy between the two players as to who will take control of the ball. Takes for uh, Chowdhury to kick it before Lisa Lai intervenes and she'll bring the ball now up towards the halfway line. The confusion as to the whereabouts of the ball. Lisa Lai now waits for the Indian player to engage before pouncing herself. And now she finds her way in Indian territory. Just over two minutes remaining of uh, normal time. And we have ourselves a uh, corner. 
How much to the surprise of the Swedish players, that's a corner. Will we see a late goal for Sweden? That would be a certain turn up for the books. The way this game has gone so far, we are heading towards penalties though. Yeah, I'd be surprised, wouldn't it? Lisa Lai and Bernson over the ball. The head coach for Sweden going absolutely berserk at his number six, Sophia Bostrom. <laughs> Do you think he wants her to go forward? <laughs> I think that was the instruction that eventually came. Akshara Rana is now man marking uh, Bostrom. Uh, no, the corner has just fizzled out and come to nothing. And India are uh, moving into the central third there with the number six, I think it is. Nurma Ben moves into Swedish territory and number 10, sorry. Carlson stops her and they're pushed out again towards that kickball on the far side in front of the main stand. Nurma Ben still going here, using all of her might to try and force an opening, but Lisa Lai intervenes and now she'll bring it upfield and she's switched from right to left. And we're closer to the kickball in front of the coaches. Here comes Chowdhury, she's in possession now, moves over towards the, the D, trying to put some pressure on this Swedish goal, but Lisa Lai deals with a danger. But the uh, possession keeps moving from one side to the other. Lisa Lai tries to bring the ball away. There's some tired legs out there now, as neither can really gain control of the ball. Keeps switching back and forth, and eventually Lisa Lai flings the ball upfield, up towards uh, an Indian player. It was Campbell that was closest to it. She allows the ball just to be played past her. And now Burnson tackles her really robustly. 45 seconds left on the, on the clock and this game just keeps ebbing and flowing. And possession keeps switching back and forth between the two teams. That was played forward there and it looks as though it will probably, well, but for Nurma Ben it was going out for a goal kick. Nurma Ben has other ideas. She wants to win this in normal time. 28 seconds remain with the number five for Sweden, Bernson well, now. You can't do that either. Be Good spot, kick. referees. Uh, indirect free kick. You can't jump up with the ball in between your feet. So, that's just about killed this game off, I think. Well, yes, it is a, an Indian free kick deep inside their own half, and there is just 21 seconds remaining. I think the Swedish coaching staff will be... Uh, pretty pleased with the fact they've managed to keep the scoreline as it is because once you go to penalties it's a, it's a bit of a lottery of course yeah for sure um, I suppose you could say the Indians have been through a penalty shootout in the previous previous games and they might be more used to it but uh, not that much of an advantage really Away comes Carlson, one second on the clock, and there is the uh, buzzer, and there is the end of this game then. Swedish players, the side that celebrate more of the two teams. Well, I'm not surprised about that really, because they've, they've got away with one there, haven't they, the Swedish team. And uh, yeah, they're def definitely the, the happier of the two sides going to penalties. Well, which way do you see this going now, Dixie? Because it really, really is anyone's game in terms of shooting ability, though. It kind of boils down to that and, I guess, the strength of the two goalkeepers as well. Yes, yeah. Conversely enough, I think it's head towards Sweden now because I think they're physically stronger uh, than the Indian team and they can get a decent contact on the ball. Um, I think they're going to hit it a little bit harder than um, probably what the Indians will. In the last time the Indians took penalties, uh, they were pretty, pretty poor to be honest, pretty shocking. And they, they were using a technique that I, <laughs> if you've got anyone here who was uh, watching the last game, I was going nuts over the technique. They were putting the ball down and taking three or four steps back, then trying to run up and kick it more. That's <laughs> That's really hard to do. You know, the ball station is not making a noise. So how do you know where it is? And um, their penalties were, were, were poor. But their keepers are right. She's a good keeper. And uh, she um, stopped quite a few uh, you know, shots by um, 
the Japanese that were on target. So, uh, yeah, I, I thought I'm, I'm leaning towards Sweden now. <laughs> Well, the referee wants us to get going quickly, so uh, that makes a change. Yeah, so they'll they'll toss for ends first, which end we're going to have these penalties at. And then uh, they'll toss for who's going to go first. And how much much does this mean to to win this game, Dixie, in terms of sort of ranking points? I guess the kudos of coming third in in a major competition as well. Yeah, well, you know, as I say, the team will win this shoot, they go on with a medal. It means it's always nice to go back to your country and say, look, this is what I've done, what have you done? And, uh, you know, a third place spot um, is good, and it's good for rankings. As I say, you get a medal. So we'll, we'll soon see what it means to them, whoever wins, and see what their reaction is like. Um, but we've got some tremendous support from the Indians behind us. It's a right racket going on. And it is fantastic atmosphere, which is lovely as well. You know, it's it's great that we have this for these crucial games at the end of the uh, the women's competition. Yeah, that's that's great, that isn't it? Yeah, there's uh, there's a couple. They're not on shot anywhere. Cause they're not in the stand, but they're directly behind our makeshift gazebo behind the goal and. Uh, yeah, they, they do make a racket when they get going. Well, the toss is taking place. It looked as though India have won it. So we'll wait to find out which end. And they're coming down our end. Yeah, so definitely our end. So that makes for uh, an interesting uh, conclusion. Sorry, I might stand up at this stage, Dixie. Oh, and just, uh, <laughs> you are definitely pushing the boat, aren't you? I am. I want to see the atmosphere, of course, as well. This is where it gets tense, of course. The, the business end of the competition and a really rousing applause for those sets of players who, are, of course, are huddled together on the uh, halfway line. So it's going to be uh, the Swedes to take the first penalty. The Indian goalkeeper is just getting some last-minute instructions from her coach. It's a little bit late now to be coaching her now, pal. <laughs> <laughs> So Kanchan Patel is in the uh, in the goal for India, and the number five, Alice Burnson, will take the first penalty. And the guide, and this well, the guide's role at this point, Dixie, becomes as important as ever. Oh yes, for sure. You know, yeah, the guide needs to have a bit of um, a relationship with the, with the players on the pitch so the guide knows exactly what they want it's up to the player what what bits of the goal he needs to tap into or she needs to tap in to ensure that they uh, they know where the goal is it's not up to the guide so you know the guides and the strikers tend to work together a lot um, and just be talking to one another can you give me this can you give me that so they've got to have a decent relationship we're nearly ready we are nearly ready, and the uh, Burnson is in the sort of... Uh, so she's about to start the 100-metre race sort of position. She's got a hand on the ball. She's just going to wait for the taps to come from yeah, the guide down the post. She's done that too early. Do you know what I mean? Because they've got all this process to go, and she's not at a very good angle for her body for all this length of time. Here we go, then. The guide has done her job. She's now stood in the middle of the goal behind the net. Burnson steps up, she shoots, hits the post, oh. and it goes over the line. Yeah, it's, it's, that was it a is goal. a goal. It is a goal. My That's word. A brilliant that. penalty. She couldn't have put it in a more sort of tighter spot, really, and we had the perfect angle to see that it had gone over the line. Yeah, yeah. Good. It hit, hit the right, uh, uh, what, the left hand poster uh, as she was looking at it, run across and dinked on to the other post and gone over the line. The referee was, was right in front of us, right on the line, and indicated it was a goal straight away well the goalkeeper Kanshan Patel looks disappointed there that she didn't manage to stop that from going in now the attention turns to Moa Berg who is the captain and goalkeeper for Sweden and the player that has come forward to take the penalty for India is Nurma Ben who was one of the star performers I'd say from that game she was solid defensively and she offered the most certainly going forward yeah that's that's great that was a good penalty to be fair and she hit it really well didn't she um, I was worried for her that she would been in that position for too long, but it was a good penalty. Let's see if the Indians have learned from their mistakes. 
Different approach here from Nurma Ben. She's almost, is she trying to sort of establish where the two posts are with her arms Yes, there? I think so. She's trying to line up her arms for the post. So she, she steps up, she shoots, and it's a good stop from Noah Berg. It's, it's lacking in a little bit of power, I'm afraid. But, uh, good save by the keeper. She's gone the right way and uh, gathered it in. The Swedes celebrate, and Lisa Lai now comes forward. Uh, one goal to the good then for Sweden. Of course, we're playing to three penalties per team. So if Sweden score this and then India miss the next one, it's all over just like that. Sweden will take the third place spot in the white women's uh, blind football competition. And I will be right again. And you'll be right <laughs> again, Dixie. You're never wrong. <laughs> Lisa Lai in the same way as Bernson lines the ball up waits for the guy to do her job that's a good technique they're using because they're not coming back off off their bodies so they know where the ball is they're not moving from that position and just swinging a leg forward it's a much better technique than taking a step back guy has done her work and it will be lisa lie then uh referee stopped it because the, the bells of some pools or whatever is ringing in the background <laughs> Blimey, if we wait for every noise, to, if, we, if we wait for silence, the amount of emergency services that have been going past, we'll be waiting for hours. Yeah, we've got to, the trouble is we've got to go through a whole damn protest again. Now she's even check her shades again. <laughs> Patience being shown by Lisa Lai. Referee happy with the uh, eye masks. We're going to go through the ritual of uh, tapping the post four times from top to bottom from the guide here. The left one is done. If you're facing outward from the goal, the second is done. The right stick. And the crowd now wait patiently. You could hear a pin drop now. Here's Lisa Lai. She shoots, and it's a good oh, save. That's you a have good to save by the Indian. It was a good, a good penalty, yeah. actually. Yes, he's got it right into the corner, and uh, the Indian keeper's gone down, and she's got two hands on it, grasped it in, pulled it back into herself. So we're going to let that one go. Lisa Lai oh. looks uh, disappointed, but it was a decent penalty, I have to say. Who have we got? Oh, we've got my... Uh, Your player of the match, yeah, perhaps. My Campbell. <laughs> Deepali Campbell. That's a good shape to bring her up next, I think. Uh, she's undoubtedly the most powerful player the Indians have got. So, Different approach from her again as well. The Indian coach gets ready, claps this time and uses that technique against okay, Campbell in the same way as Nurma Ben did in terms of sort of identifying where the posts are and he's talking all the time the Indian coach just to make sure she knows where that goal is and yes. here we go then she needs to make a decent contact on the ball it's Campbell to take she shoots nah. and it's just prodded wide I think it was going wide anyway yeah the Swedish keepers made 100% sure and she's got down and uh, I'm pretty sure her, her hand was the other side of the post wasn't it when she's made contact with the ball so made doubly sure it was going wide well it's nerve-wracking must be for the for the for the goalkeepers because you hold a huge amount of responsibility you know it's obviously a very dis different position that you're in in terms of your team not only because you're the goalkeeper but because you're sighted as well, Dixie. Yeah. So you, they yeah. must feel the nerves themselves. Yeah, you do, because you, you think, I'm playing against blind people, I shouldn't be beaten at all. And if you are beaten, it's uh, you do feel you're letting people down. And uh, But you can also be the hero, you know. Here we go then. Carlson to take this penalty. She scores this, of course. It's, it's all over. over. Pressure penalty. She's crouched down. She shoots. It's a good yeah, save. It's a good save by the Indian keeper. She stood up and uh, yeah, she didn't go down too early. The Indian keeper stood up and it was a like more like a chipped ball in, wasn't it? And uh, oh, here we go. So is this your your Shara Rana? Yeah, it boils down to this really. As the wind gets up a little bit. Here we go then, for India to stay in this contest if the penalty is saved. 
and Sweden will come third in the women's blind football here at the Ibsa Games. Mm. Yeah, the, the Indian player, what she's doing, she's turning the ball round. She wants to get the valve of the ball on the... Don't do that, referee. She, wa she wants to get the valve on the ball where she is going to make contact with it. Because if you hit it hard through that valve, it will deviate through the air. And she, should, she was looking for that area on the ball. It's happening at the post. It takes place again. Akshara Rana's got both fingers, both hands, I should say, on the ball. She's a bit of a strange angle at the moment. Hope she straightens she, herself up. Yeah, she's organised herself well there. She's used the guidance. Getting ready, but the referee again not happy that the ball has been moved. Yeah, that's come back off the spot a little bit. Yeah. The referee just explaining that when she does try and shuffle the ball around to find the valve, that the ball is moving forward. Perhaps it would help her if they let her take it quicker. Again, we're going through the process of tapping the posts. Shah Rana still with her finger on the ball. She straightens herself out. But we will have it this time. She just wipes her chin. Moves the ball slightly again. I think the referee's going to blow a whistle again, is she? No, she seems happy. And here we go. Oh. And she's just uh, scuffed it there, but the referee blows her whistle. And it's a no. And that's, that's it. The penalty is taken. She gets gutted. It's Shahrana. And the Swedish side finished third in the women's uh, blind games. Yeah, that was that technique I was saying about. You take two or three steps back, and it's a lottery. Wild celebrations for the Swedish side and the head coach for India consoles Akshara Rana there for, for the penalty. So unfortunate for India, they look despondent but the Swedes celebrate and really on the balance of play we thought that would be India's uh, game really if they had one clear cut opportunity but it just wasn't to be for them. No, not today but uh, they've got nothing to uh, be despondent about. They, they performed admirably during this tournament and uh, as I said before the start if someone had said to them when they got off the plane at Birmingham you're going to go home and you'll be in fourth place they would have taken that I'm sure uh, but uh, yeah well done Sweden they stuck in there and uh, I just had a feeling that they might be a little bit stronger physically stronger for the penalties and it turned out that way so wild celebrations from the Swedes as well Mark Blake the uh, head coach Delighted with that. Uh, and there you have it then. Sweden are the uh, winners of the third place medal. The presentations will all take place uh, following the final a bit later on. We'll be back at 10 minutes to 7 as uh, Japan take on Argentina for the all-important women's blind games uh, final in the football competition. And we'll see who goes on to take the top spot. As uh, the Swedes continue to celebrate, they're delighted with their third place finish. And we'll see you in about uh, an hour's time. Bye for now.